um, the context of uh, the State of the Apes is a series, as Doug just explained, in this specific edition we'll be looking at the impact of industrial agriculture on landscapes and on ape conservation and ape survival. And it's really an effort to look at the multiple issues that need to be addressed and looked at holistically in order to preserve landscapes, to achieve economic development, but also not to degrade those landscapes and to continue to preserve species, habitats, and everything else that's existing in those landscapes. And it's an incredibly complex issue. Um, during this conference, we've been hearing a lot about the importance and the role of forests in agricultural landscapes. And we've been talking about climate change mitigation, the role of forests in climate change mitigation, as well as the stabilization of CO2 um, concentrations in the atmosphere. And primarily the role of undegraded, intact tropical forests. And it's leading us all to um, try to achieve zero deforestation and to emphasize the importance of restoration and regeneration of degraded and cleared agricultural lands so that we can continue to benefit from the role that, fun that forests play while we gradually transition from a fossil fuel-based economy. Now this is valid and important, but viable forests are, are an ecosystem, it's an entire ecosystem, and it's a complex interplay of different species and different functions. Empty forests are not viable forests. Forests need pollinators, seed and fruit dispersers. We need landscape architecture, architects. We need predator and prey relationships. We need that whole interplay of production, reproduction, decomposition, and then we can have viable forests. So forest management and the management of landscapes that are altered by humans depend on the presence of a whole diverse array of species that can, that can fulfill those ecological functions. And each individual species has an important ecological role to play. Changing that balance and losing particular species will impact those ecosystems. And the example that Doug just gave about the, the haze from resulting from fires, from illegal clearing of land in Indonesia, is a, is a perfect example. And it has an yet uncalculable um, impact on humans and health and economies. But it also has an incredible impact that we have not, but we're not able to calculate on wildlife living in those forests. And those impacts are going to last years. You just need to look at the impact of the haze on pollinators and the role that those pollinators are going to play in maintaining those forests and regenerating those forests into the future. So all species are equally important, but some are more noticeable than others, and apes are very noticeable species. Chimpanzees, orangutans, bonobos, gibbons, gorillas, they're all protected in every country in which they're found, and yet their populations are declining and apes are endangered throughout their range. But apes play a critical role as seed dispersers, as landscape architects, but also as important flagship species for those forests and those ecosystems. And we need only look at the example of mountain gorillas and the important economic role they play in Rwanda and Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo to see that apes can contribute to the economies as well as the ecosystems. And the same argument can be made for elephants, for rhino, for tapir, for monkeys, for antelope, for deer, for jaguars, tigers, leopards, but also for tree frogs and bromeliads and spiders and all the other creatures that are in those forests. So we cannot talk about climate change and forest conservation without looking at that context and without looking at all the species that are required within those ecosystems and the conditions that are required to make forests viable. So forest conservation is a critical component of, uh, to cl combat climate change, but we need to integrate species conservation and also the needs of humans that are dependent on forest uh, ecosystems in order for it to, make, to be a success. Both species and the people living in these landscapes, the forest dependent communities, offer the greatest hope for the conservation of forests. 
to go back to Doug's question, the book, The State of the Apes, that uh, is, is shown on the screen, and which, is a which will be launched tomorrow and which is also an open access publication, so it's available to anybody who's interested, just looks at the example of apes. But it's not that apes are more important, it's just that we need to consider the role, the impact of deforestation and forest degradation on wildlife populations as well as the role they can play in regenerating forests.